Imagine this, you're a 13 year old boy growing up in New York City and you're celebrating your bar mitzvah, the time in Jewish faith when a boy becomes a man. Your older cousin gives you some money on the low as a gift. What would you do? I know what I'd do. I'd say thanks, put it in my sock, and keep it going. Nobody would ever know. Now imagine saying no to the money and asking for a job instead. That's exactly what Ronnie Feig did. Fast forward years later, and getting to work with the likes of New Balance, BMW, Coca-Cola, Tommy Hilfiger, Disney, Nike, and Asics, and even opening an ice cream store, Ronnie Feig has obviously been killing it, but his design mindset goes back to New York City in the 1990s, which was then the epicenter of hip hop culture. Selling Wu-Tang Clan some custom wallabies and outfitting Mace and Diddy with pairs of Dolomites for their newest music video, that was a typical Sunday for Ronnie Feig. The cousin of Ronnie Feig that we mentioned earlier, that was David Zakin, or better known by the successful brown boot and shoe store he owned and operated, David Zietz. Ronnie was getting the experience firsthand. He got to see what the most influential people in hip hop were buying and then seeing the public rock them shortly after. From a stock boy to the head buyer for multiple David Z locations all by the age of 25, Ronnie wasn't only seeing what the streets were wearing, he had also formed connections to the brands making the products. One of the brands that Ronnie formed a connection with was ASICS. ASICS was the first brand to give Ronnie a chance, but not just with one shoe, a three shoe pack. But what shoe would Ronnie pick? The shoe his mom bought him years ago as a kid, the Gel Light 3. He originally wanted the much more popular Reebok pump, but settled for the Gel Lights because they were less expensive. Funny enough, Ronnie Feig and Reebok have never worked together, but it'd be interesting to see a Ronnie Feig or a Kith uh, Reebok pump. ASICS was Ronnie's first collaboration, the 252 pack. Ronnie sought to bring some of what was popular in Japan to New York. Bright colors, tons of different materials all inspired by the colors popular in Japan at the time. There were three wild colorways of the Gel Light 3 with 252 sneakers for each pair, totaling to a stock of 756 pairs. Yeah, 756 pairs of shoes all of a sudden on David Z's doorstep. The worst part, his, his cousin David didn't even know about the project until they arrived, but it was now Ronnie's time to get to work. With not only his job on the line, but his relationship with his cousin, the first two days shoes didn't sell well at all. 50 pairs the first day, six the next day, Ronnie thought his time was up. The next morning, Ronnie gets a call from his mom. His sneakers were featured in the Wall Street Journal in an article talking about limited edition sneakers. The shoes sold like wildfire and all 656 pairs were sold. Ronnie Feig had made a name for himself. Well, kinda. You see, the shoe that Ronnie almost started a family divide over had the David Z label. It was a David Z and ASICS collab, not a Ronnie Feig and ASICS collab. Ronnie had a desire to reach customers beyond the brown shoe and boot store his cousin operated and started to toy around with the idea of making his own brand of Ronnie Feig curated footwear. Thus, Kith was born. This video is sponsored by Soul Savvy. The sneaker game has changed and gone are the days when you were able to go to the mall and all you needed to do was be there early to secure a pair. And look, I know you don't need me to tell you this because I'm pretty sure you've experienced trying to buy a pair of sneakers or maybe even a PS5 and you fell to the mercy of resellers and bots. It's time for us real sneaker enthusiasts to educate ourselves on how the game actually works today. And that's where Soul Savvy comes in. Not only is Soul Savvy a real community with thousands of like-minded, passionate members, but they also educate you and provide you with the tools necessary to cop the sneakers you want in today's hype climate. With a strict no resellers policy, they've taken all the best parts of a bot and made them ethical and accessible to the everyday sneaker enthusiasts like you and I. So why not give yourself a real at bat the next time you're trying to cop a pair of sneakers? Join Soul Savvy today by using the link in our description and don't forget to tell them that Not Your Average Fine sent you. All right guys, back to the video. He brought two projects with him once he left David Z's, the Salmon Toe and the Leatherback Gel Light 3s. A beautiful shoe featuring a navy suede on the majority of the build, white stripes, a split tongue, and an iconic salmon pink toe, hence the nickname the Salmon Toe. Ronnie was originally very skeptical about bringing the pair to market. After showing it to friends, Ronnie didn't think a pink toe shoe would sell well no matter what he thought of it. But the opposite ended up happening. After releasing the sample shoe through a giveaway, he found that people really wanted a pink toe shoe. Even petitions started to pop up for the shoe to release to the public. And so it did. The salmon toes dropped at the grand opening of Kit's Brooklyn location. As for the leatherbacks, they dropped at the opening of the Manhattan store. 
The Leatherbacks are more muted than the Salmon Toe counterpart with rich suede on the toe and a black leather back section, blue sole and blue accents throughout, a dope sneaker. It's kind of a yin and yang for the first releases under the Kith's namesake. The colorful and bold Salmon Toe and a more muted Leatherback. Hey, what does Kith stand for anyway? Kith came from the Greek saying, Kith and Kin, which means friends and family. It would be nearly impossible to go through every single Ronnie Feig and Kith collab because there's so many of them, but we're gonna talk about some of our favorites here at Nacho Average Finds. Also, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a like, it would really help us out. The New Balance 997.5 United Arrows collab. Now, when one thinks of Kith or Ronnie Feig, it is very hard not to instantly go to one of the New Balance projects because he's done so many of them. And countless pairs come to mind. The Steel Blues, the Dusty Rose, the Color is Packed, but two of my favorites are the 997.5 United Arrows collab and the Daytona 1600s. United Arrows is a Japanese retailer housing most of Asia's premier streetwear brands. It features light gray suede on most of the upper, a dark gray heel with multicolored New Balance logo in pink and purple and black, purple accents on the heel, a bright pink N, which I love, and then it also has a black tongue and a cream end cap midsole for an aged vintage look. This is a must have in my collection and I can't wait to cop a pair in the future, but they're pretty pricey. The New Balance 1600 Daytona. Drawing inspiration from the frequent trips Ronnie would take to Daytona Beach as a kid, this pair features brown luggage leather on the heel, which was obviously inspired by luggage, a navy toe, a really cool magenta New Balance N on top of a cream or off-white side panel, and some really cool multicolored laces, which is my favorite part. It's an awesome collab if you ask me. Moving on to one of his most high-profile designs, the LeBron and Kith 15s. Ronnie Feig and Kith don't work on too many performance silhouettes, but when they do, they make some bangers. This shoe was part of a whole collection consisting of a performance shoe, a lifestyle sneaker, and a ton of apparel, all fit for a king. The suit of armor, king's cloak, rose gold, stained glass, concrete king's crown, city of angels, and the closing ceremony. The performance pairs are probably my favorite and they added a zipper and it features subtle details like stitched crest patterns Roses and K's. The lifestyle pair features a wraparound strap for stability that reads, Long Live the King. All in all, a beautiful take on foil aesthetics that fit LeBron James well, cause he's king after all. The Homage Asics Gel Light 3. Originally unveiled at Art Basel in Miami, this sneaker celebrated the 25th anniversary for the Gel Light 3, and it combined colors and materials from 13 of the most notable Ronnie Feig and Asics projects, all on this mismatched pair. With toe boxes from the Salmon Toe and the Cove, uh, the tongue from the Miami, the stripes from the New York Knicks inspired Asics Gel Light 3 that he did, and it also has parts of the Leatherbacks in it. What works on this pair is that, yes, it is a what the, like we would commonly see on Nike products, but somehow it looks complete, like a work of art. I love this shoe, the Air Force One Lennon. Ronnie went way back for this one. In the early 2000s, Nike had the Code.jp program, a program that had regional releases exclusively for the then growing sneaker trend in Japan. This project has brought us many classic sneakers like the Ugly Duckling pack of the Dunks, the Biotech Dunks, and the recently re-released Tokyo Air Jordan 1 High. But none are more iconic and sought after than the Lennon Air Force One. An unusually tan leather upper plus a white midsole and a pastel pink swoosh equals arguably one of the best Air Force Ones of all time. This is definitely one of my grills and my fingers are crossed that it'll get a, a retro sometime here in the future. The last time they retroed it was in 2016. And it was in 2016 when Ronnie Feig brought it back for the grand opening of Kith's Miami store. Ronnie Feig and the Air Force One are no stranger to each other, but the reason I wanted to go back and talk about this one is because I wanted to display the overarching theme of Ronnie's work, which is going back in the archives and pulling models, colors, or themes from his childhood. He's even doing this now. To celebrate 10 years of Kith, Ronnie has been going back and showing us reiterations of his classic releases, re-releasing the salmon toes and the leatherbacks as gel light fives. His obsession with his work and his commitment to using interesting materials and really high quality products is what sets Ronnie, Feig, and Kith apart from the rest, in my opinion. But hey, I'd love to know what are some of your favorite uh, Ronnie, Feig, and Kith collabs. He's one of the most prolific designers out there and he puts out so much stuff that I know that you guys have some stuff to say about it in the comments down below. And with that being said guys, we are out of here. I'm gonna leave a playlist here like I always do of all the sneaker history videos that we've done. Go ahead and check that out if you feel like binge watching our videos, I'd appreciate it. If not, I hope you have a good rest of your day 
and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.